Joanna abandoned me once again for Ezekiel. This time, it was at our wedding. As I watched her back fading away, a robotic voice suddenly echoed in my mind. This is the 100th time the female lead has abandoned you for the male supporting character. Do you wish to stop being her male lead? Yes. You can now choose a new male lead for the female protagonist, Ezekiel. Since these childhood sweethearts can't let go of each other, let's seal their fate together. Chapter 1 Because Joanna was bound to you as the male lead by the system, no matter what she did, you would ultimately choose to forgive her. Now, you are free, the robotic voice continued. Can she bind me back? I asked. No. She no longer has the right to change her male lead. As the conversation ended, I felt a clarity, like clouds parting to reveal the sun. Looking at the chaotic scene among our relatives and guests, I steadied myself, took the microphone from the master of ceremonies, and spoke. I'm sorry, but the wedding cannot proceed. I apologize for the spectacle. The crowd fell silent. Earlier, Joanna said the wedding would be postponed. I disagree. From today onward, our engagement is officially terminated, and we will go our separate ways. The large banquet hall erupted once more after the bride's sudden departure. I raised my voice. Furthermore, the cash gifts will be returned double to everyone. Thank you all for coming. With that, I bowed and left the stage. My steps light. Chapter 2. Joanna and I hadn't registered our marriage, and all our friends and family knew that. It wasn't because I was unwilling. It was because she insisted on testing me for another two years. Now, I'm grateful for her decision. After all, divorce isn't easy. As I descended the final step, my parents approached me. Son, are you serious? Have you thought this through? My mother asked, gripping my hand tightly. She always felt that Joanna and I were incompatible, not just because of our different family backgrounds, but mainly because Joanna never truly cared about me. But of the two of us, I was the one who was deeply in love. My mother disapproved but didn't interfere. Now, she looked at me with hopeful eyes, wanting to confirm if her wish had finally come true. My father held her back and said calmly, He's just saying that in anger. One phone call from her, and he'll be running back. You always believe him too easily. The disappointment and helplessness in his tone were unmistakable. Most of the people present probably shared my father's view. My mother's eyes dimmed instantly, and she muttered, You're right. At that moment, it felt like a needle was stabbing my heart. When I constantly compromised without boundaries in love, wasn't I also tormenting the people who truly loved me? This time, it's real. Believe me. I promised. Holding my parents' hands. All right we believe you. They fell silent, then patted me on the back perfunctorily. Their expressions clearly showed disbelief. That's true. Joanna had abandoned me 100 times for Ezekiel, and I had forgiven her 99 times. My track record made my promises seem so weak, but it's okay. I'll prove myself eventually. Chapter 3. As the three of us were talking, Joanna's parents walked over. Daniel, really? Why make such rash statements on stage? You upset Joanna, and now you'll have to soothe her, won't you? How about this, if you help me secure that piece of land in the East District, I'll put in a good word for you, the man standing before me, with his arrogant attitude and protruding belly, was Joanna's father. There was a time when he was nothing but obsequious in front of me, now he's trampling all over me, all because I indulged and gave in to Joanna too much. Mr. Wong, Joanna and I have already broken off our engagement. I don't need you to say anything nice to her on my behalf. As for the land, I won't be helping you. Furthermore, Su Group will terminate all collaborations with your company, and all investments will be withdrawn. His small, near-bankrupt company was only revived thanks to Su Group's support, but it seems this ungrateful family has forgotten that. Wang's face immediately darkened, and he pointed at me, yelling, Fine, I won't help you. Let's see how you come crawling back to my daughter like a dog. Slap. My mother's hand landed squarely on his greasy face. If you insult my son again, I'll break your mouth. Normally gentle and kind. She now looked like a lioness protecting her cub. I'm just stating the facts. How is that an insult? Isn't that what your good son has been doing all these years? Wang didn't dare fight back physically, but his words were relentless. No matter how rich or powerful you are, with a love-obsessed son, your dignity is as good as dirt under my feet. I stepped forward and dislocated his jaw, staring into his eyes. Get out. He stumbled back a few steps, and Joanna's mother caught him, looking at me with disdain and certainty. We'll be waiting for your family to come and apologize. With that, she dragged Wang away. My parents looked at me in shock. Then with wariness, we're not going to apologize. I won't be going either. I swore. They fell silent. Chapter 4. After seeing off a wave of guests, my assistant approached, boss, should the PR department handle the trending topics and online discussions? I checked the internet. The wedding was a hot topic of discussion. Several hashtags were trending. Hashtag Joanna the runaway bride hashtag. Hashtag Joanna abandons Daniel for Ezekiel at their wedding hashtag. 
Hashtag Daniel announces end of engagement with Joanna hashtag. Joanna's fans were laughing hysterically. Serves him right. That's our queen. The crown prince of the capital is nothing but a dog in front of her. If she wants to throw him away, she will. Show him respect. Not a chance. Looks like the destined one can't beat the childhood sweetheart. The crown prince finally managed to grovel his way to a wedding. But with one wave, the childhood friend took her away. Oh wow. The crown prince is actually talking tough now. I bet he'll be begging for mercy within three days. Poor crown prince. All these years he didn't even get a title. Just the label of a simp. Our queen is truly badass. Good thing she didn't sign the marriage certificate. So she can leave whenever she wants. Even with so many big names at the wedding. She still does whatever she pleases. So what if he's a crown prince? To our queen. He's just a plaything. Queen really is the protagonist of a badass female lead story. The screen was full of such comments. Even though Joanna was in the wrong. Her fans cleverly used the feminist angle to keep their idol untouchable. Some neutral voices tried to point out. Fans don't need to be so arrogant. Your queen only got this far because the crown prince paved the way with money. With her average looks and acting skills, she wouldn't have made it otherwise. But the fans immediately shot back. Shut up. Our queen got to where she is today on her own. Stop giving credit to that disgusting man. He only ever held her back. The fans mirrored their idol, ungrateful and forgetful. I was the one who lifted Joanna from a nobody in the entertainment industry to a top actress. Since I brought her up, I can also bring her down. No need to handle the online comments. Leave them be. Freeze Joanna out. Replace all her resources. And if that's not possible, terminate the contracts. I'll cover the breach of contract fees. Joanna's management contract was with a film company under Sue Group. And there were still two years left on it. I'm not going to push her too far. The contract was generous. And the breach fees won't put too much pressure on her. My assistant looked at me in surprise. Then cautiously asked. Boss. I'm sorry. I didn't quite hear you. Do as the boss says. Even if he changes his mind. I'm here. And I won't let you get caught in the middle. My father interjected. Thank you, chairman. The assistant immediately went to carry out the orders. Just then, Joanna called. Ezekiel's been arrested. Get him out and make things right. Her tone was icy. Like she was ordering a subordinate around. Chapter 5. I frowned and directly hung up. Blocking her number. Soon. An unfamiliar number called. It was still Joanna. Daniel. What do you mean? Ezekiel got into a fight because of me. He was defending my honor. So, shouldn't you be the one to bail him out? My problems are your problems, aren't they? Her tone was completely self-assured. I laughed in disbelief. Joanna, has no one told you? I've already publicly announced the cancellation of our engagement. There was a few seconds of silence on the other end before she spoke again. Danny, it was wrong of me to leave you at the wedding. But you know, Ezekiel becomes uncontrollable when he drinks and starts fighting. I'm the only one who can calm him down. Just get him out today, and later on. We can have an even grander wedding. Oh. And Ezekiel beat up the youngest son of the Shin family. You need to smooth things over. I'm worried about retaliation. In the past. No matter how angry I was. All it took was a little coaxing from her. And my anger would vanish. Leaving only concern and guilt. But now. I felt nothing. I was truly free from her control. Not my problem. I responded bluntly. Then hung up. When I looked up. My parents were staring at me intently. Danny. You really. My mom's eyes were full of hope. My dad quickly pulled her back, don't get ahead of yourself, let's wait and see, it's been less than a day, seeing how they wanted to believe me but couldn't, my heart ached, these two who were once so decisive in the business world were now so cautious, all because of me, because they loved me, chapter 6, I had looked into the fight Ezekiel was involved in, he hadn't attended the wedding, instead, he had gone to a bar to drown his sorrows, it was understandable, I suppose, seeing the one you love getting married to someone else, but then he overheard someone at the next table saying that my marriage with Joanna was a case of a highborn marrying beneath them. And he went berserk, attacking the person. A man almost 30 years old beating up a kid barely out of his teens. Knowing how fiercely protective the Shin family is, he's in for a tough time. Joanna didn't call me again, but she did send a text. Daniel, I'm giving you a day to think it over. If you don't help Ezekiel, then we're done. This was her usual tactic. I ignored her. That evening. News began spreading on forums about Joanna's roles in films and endorsements being replaced. Her fans started to panic. What's going on? Is Daniel really serious this time? He's actually starting to cut Crystal's resources. Is our queen getting blacklisted? This is kind of scary. Even though I hate to admit it, Daniel is the one who elevated Crystal. Of course, it was mainly because our queen worked hard and lived up to the opportunities she was given. At exactly midnight, Joanna posted on Weibo, What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Her fans immediately rallied, rejuvenated. That's my queen, not afraid of anything. Self-reliance is the key, turning into a fan right here. 
This queen is so cool. I love her. Ha ha. The queen has spoken. Fans, don't worry. Just follow her lead. We are her strong support. I laughed at their naivety. People who have lived in a greenhouse for too long need to experience the true harshness of the entertainment industry. Chapter 7. Joanna came to see me three days later. I thought she'd last at least a week. I overestimated her. Daniel, what the hell are you doing? In the conference room, she coldly demanded an explanation in front of everyone. I looked her over, small frame, slightly tanned skin. Her features could only be described as plain. Her eyes were somewhat decent, large and seemingly filled with emotion. But in reality, they were devoid of any. There was nothing about this person that attracted me. Thinking back on how I had been manipulated by the system to hold her on a pedestal for three years, I felt a wave of disgust. Thank goodness I was finally free. How long are you going to keep making a fuss over this nonsense? Seeing that I didn't respond, she slammed the table. First, you're going to get Ezekiel out of jail for me. Second, your family will apologize to my parents, and you will resume cooperation with my father's company and increase your investment. Third, you'll give back my resources, I want the female lead role in director Zhang's film, and you're going to secure it for me. After finishing, she raised her chin and looked at me, if you do all this, I might consider forgiving you. I couldn't hold back and burst out laughing. Miss Wong, if you're sick, go to a hospital. Don't come here spouting nonsense. I signaled to the security guards, escort Miss Wong out. If anyone lets her in without my permission again, they can go hand in their resignation to HR. Daniel, Joanna's face changed, and she shouted angrily, her gaze filled with hatred. This wasn't unfamiliar to me, whenever I didn't immediately solve problems for her and Ezekiel, I'd be met with this look. In the past, such a gaze would pierce me deeply and I'd quietly clean up the mess. Yet even then, I wasn't worthy of a thank you. At first, Ezekiel would reluctantly express gratitude, but Joanna would stop him. Why thank him? It's giving him too much credit. He knew you were in trouble and didn't take the initiative to help. No sincerity. Eventually, the two of them began to take my help for granted. Now, I looked at her as if she were a madwoman. You'll regret this. As the security guards dragged her out, she glared at me and spat out the words through gritted teeth. I smiled. The one who'll regret this won't be me. When I got home that evening, my mother personally cooked dinner for me. My father opened a bottle of wine, not bad. Three days, worthy of a little celebration. I sighed. The road is long, and changing their perception won't be easy. Chapter 8 The day Ezekiel was released from detention, Joanna went to pick him up herself. Someone recorded a video and uploaded it online. In the video, Joanna was seen fussing over Ezekiel, her eyes filled with concern. At the end of the video, she linked arms with him playfully flirting as they got into the car, looking every bit like a loving couple. Fans went wild in the comments. So sweet. Childhood sweethearts are the best. Her eyes are just full of love. She never looked at the crown prince that way. This is hilarious, cold and dismissive with the crown prince, but a total love-struck woman with her childhood friend. Queen. Just admit it already. The one you love isn't Daniel. It's Ezekiel. Exactly. Love and a cough can't be hidden. The crown prince is out. Can't wait for this couple to go public. Such comments used to make me feel like I had something stuck in my throat. Now, I just want to tell the fans, congratulations, your wish has come true. I didn't expect that after seeing the video during the day, I'd run into them in person that same night. Chapter 9 At the time, I was leaving a bar with a friend, strolling while waiting for the driver to pick us up. As we passed a narrow alley, we heard a woman shouting, I'm Daniel's girlfriend, let's see who dares to touch him, get lost. It was Joanna. My friend and I exchanged a glance and quickly walked to the entrance of the alley, just in time to hear a young man respond. Yeah, right, you ditched that trash at the wedding for this guy, and young Master Sue immediately announced your breakup. Move aside. This has nothing to do with you, we're only here for Ezekiel. I've already reconciled with Daniel. He'll be here any minute to pick me up. If you're so tough, don't leave. Joanna lied with such confidence. Under the dim yellow light, the young thugs looked at each other in confusion, taking advantage of the moment. Joanna knelt beside the groaning Ezekiel, tenderly touching his face, her voice trembling with tears, brother, it's okay now, once Daniel gets here, we'll take you to the hospital, the little warmth left in my heart grew even colder, in the three years we were together, Joanna had never shed a single tear for me, once, during a car accident, I was severely injured while protecting her, my head was bleeding, and several ribs were broken, even then, her first reaction was, you did that voluntarily, so don't try to use it to morally blackmail me later. While I lay in the operating room, my life hanging by a thread, she, unscathed, went to celebrate Ezekiel's birthday. My mother was furious and called her. She replied, I'm not a doctor, what's the point of waiting outside? Ezekiel is my only family. What's wrong with me celebrating his birthday? No concern, no sympathy, just cold indifference. 
After that incident, when my parents found out I was still dating Joanna, they took back the company shares they had given me. They believed that with my love-obsessed mindset, it was only a matter of time before the Su group ended up under the Wang family's control. Chapter 10. There's no reconciliation. I stepped into the alley, and everyone turned to look at me. Young Master Su, the thugs exclaimed. I nodded. Carry on. I'm just passing by to clear up a misunderstanding. Got it. One of the thugs immediately grabbed Joanna by the collar, pulling her aside to stop her from interfering. The others resumed beating Ezekiel. My friend and I calmly walked out of the alley. Daniel, don't go. Joanna panicked. I didn't look back. All I could hear was her crying out, stop, stop, I'll pay you. How about 10,000, 20,000? No one paid her any attention. My friend mocked me. Now that's true love, you were just a one-sided affair. I couldn't argue, so I kicked him in the shin. As we playfully continued walking, Joanna suddenly ran up and grabbed my arm. Her hair was disheveled, her face streaked with tears, and her makeup was a mess. Daniel, please save Ezekiel. Those guys were sent by the Shin family to cause trouble. I've never begged anyone for anything, especially not you, but I'm begging you now. Please smooth things over for Ezekiel. Otherwise, the Shin family won't let this go. I scoffed. She never had to beg anyone before because I was always there. She didn't beg me because all she had to do was give orders, and I'd do whatever she wanted. No need to lower herself. No need to beg. Looking at her, groveling for Ezekiel's sake, I finally asked the question that had been bothering me. If you care so much about Ezekiel, why aren't you with him? Her response was a smug smile. Daniel, you're still jealous, aren't you? Don't worry, I'll definitely marry you. Ezekiel is just a good friend. She looked absolutely terrible with her disheveled appearance, and her smile made it even worse, adding a creepy effect under the dim streetlight. I got goosebumps and had no desire to continue this conversation. I'm not helping. And stop pretending to be my girlfriend. I'll never marry you. Joanna's smile froze on her face. After a moment, she said, Daniel, you will marry me. I chuckled. Wishful thinking. She swayed slightly, looking as if she had taken a huge blow. If she couldn't handle this, she had no idea how much harsher her words had been to me. As I left, Ezekiel's screams echoed through the alley. I never expected that Joanna, who kept saying she wanted to marry me, would send me her wedding invitation with Ezekiel just a few days later. Chapter 11. The two of them came together, standing hand in hand in front of me, looking very intimate. Next week. Ezekiel and I are getting married. We'd love for you to attend our wedding, Joanna said, staring intently at my face. I casually accepted the bright red invitation card. Congratulations. If I have time, I'll be there. The two of them remained standing there, not moving. I frowned slightly. Is there anything else? Daniel. Joanna's voice choked up. I'm marrying someone else. I looked at her, puzzled. I heard you, and I already congratulated you. Don't you feel even a little sad? She asked, unwilling to let it go. Sad about what? You love him. He loves you. What's wrong with that? Besides, it's not like you've registered the marriage yet. You can always change your mind. Ezekiel's face darkened. Sorry, that's just my experience. It probably doesn't apply to you, I said, smiling at him. His expression didn't improve much. What if I do register the marriage? Joanna bit her lip and pressed on. My eyes narrowed, and I was momentarily speechless. Joanna's lips curled into a smug smile, as if she had won. Daniel, this time, I'm going to register the marriage. Ezekiel looked at her in surprise. Do as you please. I turned to leave, my back to them probably looking more like a retreat. Chapter 12. The next day, news broke online that Joanna and Ezekiel had registered their marriage. Her fans exploded. Sis, what are you doing? Are you addicted to cleaning up messes? You're choosing this guy over someone as good as Daniel. We were just shipping a couple for fun, and you actually took it seriously. Ezekiel may have liked you for over 20 years, but he's never been without a girlfriend. Is your brain full of water? Why choose Ezekiel? Why? Daniel is a hundred. No, a thousand times better than him. Are you really in love? Or just trying to spite Daniel? You know it's the wrong choice, so why make it? A small number of fans were confused. How romantic is it to go from school uniforms to wedding dresses with your childhood sweetheart? What's wrong with you all? You used to say Daniel wasn't worth a cent. Someone immediately explained to them. Trashing Daniel was to help Joanna build her persona. Don't you get it? Go look into Ezekiel's dark history before you speak. This is infuriating. She had a golden opportunity with Daniel but chose this worthless trash. Joanna cornered me in the parking lot. This time alone. Daniel. I really got married this time. She opened the marriage certificate and showed it to me. Congratulations. You've gotten what you wanted. She stared at me, hoping to find some sign of regret on my face. But there was none. She panicked, muttering to herself. Why is it like this? It wasn't supposed to be like this. That day. You clearly. Just live your life well from now on. 
And don't come looking for me, your husband wouldn't be happy about it. The two of you are a perfect match. No. Joanna shook her head frantically, her eyes red with anger. He's not good enough for me. He smokes, drinks, is promiscuous, and gets into trouble all the time. He's a worthless person who can't even take care of himself. So she was aware of Ezekiel's flaws. But before, she loved to say in front of me, what makes Daniel think he can compare to you? And she'd always give me a disdainful look, not hiding her contempt. Daniel, Joanna's tone softened. We're the ones who truly belong together. I only helped him because I pitied him. Marrying him was just to provoke you. She clung to my arm, pleading. I'll go and divorce Ezekiel right now. I'll never see him again, and I'll never help him again. Daniel, can we go back to how we were? She refused to let go of my hand. I turned my head away in disgust, just in time to see Ezekiel standing not far away, his fists clenched, veins bulging on his forehead. Everyone knows you love him. You just haven't come to terms with your own feelings yet, I said, smiling down at Joanna. It's not true. The only person I love is you, she tearfully argued. At that moment, Joanna's parents suddenly rushed over, son-in-law, let's talk about this at home, they said with ingratiating smiles, completely different from their arrogant demeanor at the wedding, I pointed behind them in disbelief, your son-in-law is over there, don't get the wrong person, Mr. Wong turned and glanced at Ezekiel, then explained to me, don't worry, son-in-law, their marriage is just a formality, Mrs. Wong's face blossomed into a smile, Danny, you're the son-in-law we've chosen, come on, let's go home, tell me what you want to eat and I'll make it for you. Isn't my cooking your favorite? I never received this kind of treatment before. Whenever I went to the Wong house, Ezekiel was always there. Mrs. Wong only cooked what he liked and never considered my preferences. They've registered the marriage, so it's not just a formality, I said seriously, looking directly at Ezekiel. Your marriage is legally protected, as long as one of you refuses. No one can force you to divorce. His eyes flickered, and he scanned the Wong family trio with a dark expression. Ezekiel will do as I say, if I want a divorce, he'll comply, Joanna said, tightening her grip on my hand, I pried her fingers off one by one, Miss Wong, whether you divorce or not has nothing to do with me, stop bothering me, Daniel, she tried to say something, I cut her off with a cold glare, let go, she was startled and then collapsed to the ground, covering her face and sobbing, why is this happening, because you've been trampling on other people's feelings all along, seeing that I was unmoved, Mr. and Mrs. Wong suddenly dropped to their knees in front of me. Son-in-law, even if you don't reconcile with Joanna, please help our company for old time's sake. The Wong family's company was founded by Joanna's grandfather. After the old man passed away, it was inherited by Mr. Wong. Unfortunately, he had no talent for business, and within a few years, he had run it into bankruptcy. It only revived thanks to my help, but now that I've cut off all support, the company is once again on the brink of collapse. I ignored them and walked around them behind me, Mr. and Mrs. Wong blamed their daughter, it's all your fault for being so difficult, you ran away from the wedding for that worthless guy, now look, he doesn't want you anymore, you swore Daniel would marry you, but what happened, Joanna cried out, did you ever treat him well, all you do is blame me when things go wrong, then her voice turned full of disgust, get away from me, don't touch me, we're going to get divorced right now, I'm not going to marry you, so she could also speak harshly to him, too bad it's for her own sake, not for mine, once, when Ezekiel deliberately caused me harm, she stood by his side and even turned the blame on me. Chapter 13 It happened two years into our relationship. We were hiking once, and someone pushed me hard from behind on a steep slope. Before I fell, I instinctively grabbed the person's clothes. As a result, both of us tumbled down the slope together. The person who pushed me was Ezekiel. When I woke up, I was already in the hospital. I had scrapes on my hands and face, my ankle was swollen like a bun, and I had a mild concussion. Just as I was about to ask the nurse about Ezekiel's condition, Joanna came in with red-rimmed eyes, pulling him along. She didn't care about my injuries at all and immediately questioned me. Daniel, you slipped, so why did you drag Ezekiel down with you? How could you be so malicious? Look at how injured he is. I took a closer look. His so-called injuries were just a bandage on his forehead and a small adhesive bandage on his right hand. Just as I was about to argue, one of our friends who had gone hiking with us snapped back. Joanna, don't be so over the top. It was Ezekiel who deliberately pushed Daniel, and Daniel reflexively grabbed his clothes, which is why they both fell, and Daniel's injuries are much worse than your good friends. Can you at least show some concern for your own boyfriend? Joanna didn't believe it and aggressively demanded that our friend provide evidence. It wasn't until the friend showed her a video, captured by someone else at the time, that she finally shut up. Ezekiel, who had been silent until then, finally spoke. Joanna let it go, it was my fault, I was just trying to play a joke on young master Sue. Sigh, 
I won't dare do it again. Rich people are so delicate. Joanna patted his hand reassuringly. It's not your fault if he couldn't keep his balance. You're the one who's been wronged here. Don't let people with ulterior motives manipulate you. Then she shot me a sideways glance. You slipped and dragged an innocent person down with you. So don't let your lapdogs try to turn the tables. It's embarrassing enough. From start to finish, she didn't ask about my injuries even once. That time, I made up my mind to break up with Joanna. But one phone call from her. And I forgot all about my anger and disappointment. Continuing to be her devoted simp. Chapter 14. Joanna. Of course, didn't end up getting divorced. I suspect that even without the system's interference, Ezekiel wouldn't have agreed to it. Mr. and Mrs. Wong came to see me twice, begging me to save their daughter and their company. I didn't even get out of the car, letting them plead outside. If they had shown me even the slightest respect before, I wouldn't have taken things this far. All of their regret now is just the price they're paying for their past arrogance. Joanna's fans flooded my social media, begging me to take their queen back. Now they were starting to appreciate me as if they weren't the ones who had trashed me before. Fans of other celebrities mocked them by sharing screenshots of their hypocrisy. I love seeing people eat their words. So satisfying. My parents finally believed that I was truly determined to end things. They were so happy that they gave all the employees a bonus and even returned my shares to me. Chapter 15. After the company turned down several projects involving Joanna, she finally came to discuss terminating her contract. I had someone bring her into my office. When we met again, she was polite and spoke much more softly. I remained strictly professional, wasting no time with small talk. The contract termination process was completed quickly. Just as she was about to leave, Joanna suddenly said, Excuse me, I need to use the restroom. She then headed straight for the restroom in my office's lounge. I frowned and held back the legal and financial staff who were about to leave, sensing that something was about to happen. After about 10 minutes with no sign of her, I asked the finance staff to knock on the door. There was no response, and the door was locked from the inside. My heart sank and I kicked the door open. The financial staff behind me screamed. Inside the room, Joanna was lying on the bed, blood staining the light-colored sheets. She had slit her wrists and was already semi-conscious. It turns out she hadn't given up yet. After bandaging her wounds, I took her to the hospital and waited for her to wake up. When Joanna opened her eyes in the hospital bed and saw me, tears started to fall in large drops. She reached out to grab my hand. Danny, let's get back together. I love you, and you still love me, don't you? I stepped back avoiding her grasp, and looked at her pale face. This is the end. I don't have any feelings for you anymore. Hurting yourself won't change anything. She had indeed been ruthless with herself this time, but it didn't matter. Such tactics only work if I still had lingering feelings. Why? You used to love me so much, she asked, her face growing even paler, her voice filled with sorrow. You said it yourself, used to. Love can be worn down, and when you repeatedly chose Ezekiel over me, you should have known this day would come. No. You're supposed to forgive me. You've always forgiven me, no matter what I did to you. I didn't have the energy to argue with her. So I told her the biggest surprise. I won't forgive you, and I won't be with you, because. Ezekiel is your true male lead. Her eyes widened in shock, and she began to tremble. No, you're my male lead. You've always been. I changed it for you, on the day you ran away from the wedding. No need to thank me, I said, smiling and waving goodbye, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. She stared blankly for a moment before erupting into hysterical screams, why can't it be changed back? You're lying. Change it back. Change it back. She was probably arguing with her system. As I left the room, I passed Ezekiel in the hallway. His eyes were bloodshot from a hangover, and he reeked of alcohol, smoke, and perfume. Soon after, I heard the sound of a glass shattering, followed by Joanna's angry voice, what are you doing here? Get out. Ezekiel responded lazily, I'm your husband, aren't I? How could I not come to see you? Looks like you're fine. Now, how about giving me some money to spend? Chapter 16. I saw Joanna again at a cocktail party. She had completely abandoned her aloof persona and was openly flattering directors and producers. Circumstances can really change a person. Although I hadn't been particularly following her life after leaving the hospital, I had heard bits and pieces. After terminating her contract, she set up her own studio. Without my unwavering support, her opportunities plummeted. Ezekiel even became her manager. This man had no experience, no ability, and no principles, everything was driven by profit. Originally, Joanna could still secure decent projects due to her popularity, but Ezekiel, for the sake of money, accepted terrible scripts for her. Of course, they were a match made in heaven, as Joanna had to agree in the end. Right. The results were predictable, disaster after disaster, leading to mockery. After several flops, Joanna could only land supporting roles in low-budget web series. Unwilling to accept this, 
she put together a production of her own, which ended in a disastrous financial loss. She even had to sell her house to cover the debt. Her family's company had already declared bankruptcy before that. After consecutive failures, Joanna began attending various parties, looking for someone who could help her make a comeback. At first, she tried to keep it discreet, but eventually, she did it openly. She was often photographed getting cozy with different people or coming in and out of hotels with them. The few remaining fans she had left were anxiously counting down to the end of her marriage. Some even persistently commented on my social media, urging me to take Joanna back. What a joke, this loving couple was a union I had personally sealed, and no one was going to break it up, including myself, Daniel. Long time no see. I had just finished greeting a group of people when Joanna sat down next to me. She looked much older, with faint bruises on her face. I'd heard that she and Ezekiel had ended up in the hospital multiple times from their fights. Long time no see. I replied politely, and then there was silence. After a while, a waiter came by with a tray, and Joanna grabbed the only two glasses of wine, handing one to me. Have a drink. I accepted it but didn't drink. What's wrong? Afraid I spiked it. Don't worry. I'm not interested in men anymore. She clinked her glass against mine and downed her drink. I showed her a video on my phone. Her face turned pale, then flushed. In the video, she was seen pouring a white powder into a wine glass. I handed my glass to my assistant. Take this for testing. Joanna tried to snatch it back, but a voice suddenly rang out in the hall, Joanna. At that moment, Joanna's eyes flashed with rage as she gritted her teeth, Ezekiel. Ezekiel emerged from the crowd, his face full of undisguised hatred. Joanna, didn't expect me to come back, did you? It's not so easy to get rid of me. He was leaning on a crutch, his head wrapped in bandages, his exposed skin covered in scars. Joanna went berserk and lunged at him, die. The crowd watched as the two of them started fighting but no one stepped in to stop them. What happened in Roma completely ended Joanna's acting career. Her last remaining fans abandoned her and even turned against her. The drug in the drink she gave me was meant to cause hallucinations. When I got the test results, a friend patted me on the shoulder. Good thing you were prepared. Congratulations on escaping the fire pit. Yes, congratulations to me. Let those two torment each other. Oh, by the way, during that fight at the party, Joanna was disfigured and blinded, and Ezekiel's injuries worsened, his leg was permanently disabled. Chapter 17. Later, Joanna's parents publicly exposed Ezekiel's domestic abuse against their daughter online. The comments were almost unanimous, serves her right, evil begets evil. Joanna and Ezekiel became a pair of resentful, tormented spouses, unable to live together, yet unable to separate. As for me, I fully took over the family business and met a woman who was a perfect match for me in both background and mutual affection. After two years of dating, we held a grand wedding, a perfect wedding. Daniel, congratulations on finding the right person. That long-forgotten electronic voice suddenly appeared. You and your wife will love each other, grow old together, and live a happy and fulfilling life.